Hey guys, welcome to another Musician Mastery. And right now, I'm sitting outside of Sonic Palace Studios in uh, basically Chicago, Illinois. Uh, my band Kira and I were gonna record some new music for the first time in two and a half years, almost three years. So it's really exciting. Anyway, I'm making this video to give you guys another set of tour tips since I recently just finished um, my tour with Kira when we were touring with Tantric and I learned some more pieces of information along the way which I try to do on every tour that I go on and I figured I would uh, pass on some of that information to you guys in this um, second episode of Tour Tips. <laughs> first tour tip that I'm going to give to you is something I got from a guitar player named Johnny Monaco and one thing he said that really struck with me is you can't always play for yourself and I thought that was really interesting because um, typically when, when we're playing live one of our big sentiments is that we, we only play for ourselves. If you ever want to grow as a band and you ever want to appeal to more people you have to play for other people but not in the sense that you have to compromise your integrity as a band but you have to at least know that you're playing for more than just yourself. When you're going out on stage, if, you're, if you just kind of like, I'm only in my zone and I'm only playing my stuff, sometimes audiences don't gravitate to that and it can be harder to get your music out to people because um, you're not engaging with them enough. So that's one piece of advice that I thought was really cool was don't just play for yourself all the time. Sometimes audiences like that, that you're in your zone and that you're all focused about the music, but some audiences want you to interact with them and, and make it more of a lively kind of show thing. So you can't always play for yourself. Tour tip number two, you have to have some sort of system of accountability for your own equipment while you're on tour. Most likely when you're touring, you and your other bandmates are going to be loading up equipment together and it's not really going to be specified that you know only the drummer can load the drum equipment only the bass player can load the bass equipment and so on it's not really like that it's more of just whoever's free grabs whatever equipment is ready to be loaded in and then loads it into the van so one thing that's going to be very helpful for you on tour is to develop some sort of accountability system for all of your gear you know every member Take, make sure that all their gear is accounted for, whether they loaded it or not, that'll save you a lot of headaches in the future. We had a situation where we thought we had loaded everything, but we had forgotten uh, double kick pedals. So now we have to rent kick pedals and drop money to rent pedals for the studio when we could have just had them. So even if somebody else is loaded, go check and make sure that you're not forgetting anything because it's really easy to forget something on the road. I mean, I've forgotten countless cables. I mean, I've, I've even forgot a pedal. I mean, it just, it'll save you in the long run if you, if you have some sort of accountability for your equipment. Okay, tour tip number three. This is the last one I'll do before we go back into the studio. You're gonna come across a situation probably where another band is gonna to wanna to use your equipment. I'm not saying by any means that you should be a dick and not lend your equipment out, but if you're going on the tour with somebody and you have an agreement that they're going to use your equipment, it is customary and standard industry practice to get compensated, pay compensated for use of that equipment. So to simplify that, what I mean is if you're going out on tour and a band that you're going out on tour with every night is going to be borrowing your equipment. They need to be paying you per night to use that equipment. And then, and that's not you being rude, that's just standard industry practice. And if you're not doing that, you're probably getting taken advantage of. And, and you know, sometimes it's not even through malicious means that you're being taken advantage of, it's just that you didn't know that that was something that was customary. You know, so there's, it's not like they're trying to dupe you out of money, but if you weren't smart enough to know, hey, you need to be compensated pay-wise for this, for use of the of your equipment, then that is kind of your fault. But that's why I'm making these tour tips, so you don't have to make that mistake like I have in the past. So um, I hope you guys learned something. Um, I'll be doing more of these tour tips um, is as soon as I get information that I feel is worth getting out to you people. I will make sure to make any sort of tour tips as often as I possibly can. So um, remember pre-register for the Musician Mastery. You can click the card right here in the top of the. Uh, screen and um, I will see you guys on the next tour tips. Bye bye.